in an undisclosed location, a woman is being tortured. The methods of her abuse are too horrific to be described, and her torturers are death row prison inmates, the absolute worst of the worst. This woman's torture is constant, and procedures are put into place to make sure she never becomes accustomed to the pain. If ever her torturers express sympathy toward their victim, their superiors will have them removed and replaced. If they try to rescue her or put her out of her misery, they themselves will be shot without hesitation. The woman being tortured is known only as SCP-231-7, and worst of all, she's pregnant. The cause of her eternal torture? The SCP Foundation. And you'll be shocked to learn that when all is said and done, these are the good guys. Because if they ever stop their brutal treatment of SCP-231-7, a treatment codenamed Procedure 110 Montauk, she'll give birth to a creature that will destroy the world as we know it. This is just one of the many examples of the objects and entities under the watchful eyes of the SCP Foundation, a mysterious group that strives to achieve greater good by any means necessary, and we do mean any. What you're about to hear is above classified, and be warned. What is heard can never be unheard, unless, of course, the Foundation gets its hands on you. So what is the SCP Foundation? In the most basic sense, the group's mission statement hmm. is right there in the SCP acronym. Secure, contain, protect. It's the task of the Foundation to, in their own words, contain anomalous objects, entities, and phenomena. Things that don't make sense, things that don't belong, things that simply don't fit in with our perception of reality, and some things that pose an existential threat to all human life. They refer to these contained anomalies as SCPs, each of which is accompanied by a number. This is a broad umbrella, as an SCP can range from benign or even actively helpful to downright apocalyptic if ever released. Much like the infamous Men in Black often reported by witnesses in connection with alien sightings, the Foundation works in secret to maintain a sense of normalcy at all costs, knowing the chaos it would cause if any of the anomalies they're harboring ever become public. Take for example SCP-500. To the untrained eye, the object is just an unassuming prescription pill bottle, the kind you'd see in medicine cabinets the world over. But the pills in this humble bottle are unlike any earthly medicine. They can cure quite literally anything, from cancer to a cold within two hours. But at the time of this writing, there are only 47 pills left. The power to cure all disease, a privilege denied to even the richest and most powerful in society. A veritable holy grail. Can you imagine the violence and horror that would break out in trying to obtain them if their existence ever became public? The SCP Foundation works in secret because the collective mind of society just couldn't handle the knowledge of what they're dealing with. They work with the approval of all world governments, effectively placing them above international law. Essentially, there is no human authority above the Foundation, because without the Foundation's work, there would be no humans left to govern. To understand the basic operations of this above top secret organization, we need to delve a little further into that Secure, Contain, Protect slogan. Secure refers to the Foundation's practice of constant global surveillance and observation in order to detect and intercept anomalous activity before it can interact with civilians or rival groups. Contain involves preventing the effects or influence of the anomaly from spreading by either, in their own words, relocating, concealing, or dismantling such anomalies, or by suppressing or preventing public dissemination of knowledge thereof. The latter can involve practices such as using advanced chemical compounds or technologies to delete and then rewrite the memories of infected civilians, or even committing mass murder if necessary to cover their tracks. The SCP Foundation has in the past wiped out entire towns of innocent oh. civilians to prevent dangerous information about the SCP spreading beyond their control. They can take lives at their own discretion and consider almost any crime to be permissible when the alternative is Armageddon. And finally, protect pertains to all operations meant to protect mankind from the SCPs, up to and including neutralizing and destroying them when possible. Some SCPs, such as the infamous SCP-682, a nigh-indestructible genocidal reptilian, have proved to be almost impossible to destroy. Research is ongoing in many cases, as the Foundation explores any and all possible methods of reducing the threat of more dangerous SCPs. In order to help them categorize the thousands of strange and horrifying anomalies under their watch, the Foundation has created a system that organizes the SCPs based on the difficulty of containing them. The first of the primary object classes is SAFE, pertaining to SCPs that require little if any resources to safely and properly contain. Examples include the previously mentioned SCP-500 pill bottle and SCP-999, a benevolent blob of gelatinous orange matter. SCP-999 has a playful, almost dog-like personality, 
It causes feelings of happiness and euphoria in whoever or whatever it touches. It's even been used by the Foundation as a pacification tool to reduce aggression in other SCPs. The second primary object class is Euclid, which refers to any anomaly that requires more resources to contain completely or where containment isn't always reliable. This is the broadest SCP class, and the majority of sentient, sapient, or autonomous anomalies fall into this category. A Euclid SCP might be something as huge, sprawling, and bizarre as SCP-3008. This SCP appears to be a kind of anomalous pocket dimension hidden inside an IKEA superstore, which is not only significantly larger on the inside by approximately 10 kilometers, but also contains bizarre, faceless entities which can become hostile under the right conditions. A Euclid SCP can also be something as seemingly innocuous as SCP-294, which appears to the untrained eye to be a standard coffee vending machine. However, unlike any other coffee machine, the input system on SCP-294 is a QWERTY keyboard. This SCP can manifest any liquid typed in on the keyboard, from standard drinks like coffee and beer to more esoteric compounds like sulfuric acid and disease-infected human blood. During extensive tests, one subject requested the perfect drink and was given an odorless, lavender-colored liquid. After consuming the liquid, the subject went into a state of euphoric shock. The subject later committed suicide, leaving a note which read, I'm sorry, but at this point everything's just one big letdown. Sadly, subjects dying during tests is not uncommon. The SCP Foundation essentially has limitless resources, including access to countless disposable workers and test subjects. The most common of these are so-called D-Class personnel, which are death row inmates conscripted for the purposes of often lethal SCP experimentation or containment. The next primary object class is Keter, described by the Foundation as anomalies that are exceedingly difficult to contain consistently or reliably, with containment procedures often being extensive and complex. This can either be due to being an extremely volatile and dangerous anomaly or just one that seems to defy known laws of physics or reality, and is thus extremely difficult to understand or contain. The SCP Foundation has a vast number of secret facilities across the globe, and while the Keter-class SCPs are not nearly as common as the Euclid-class, they consume a great deal more resources to safely contain. One particularly terrifying Keter-class SCP is SCP-354, colloquially known by the Foundation employees as the Blood Pond. This SCP is a large pool of non-biological red liquid discovered in North Canada that appears to be a kind of interdimensional primordial soup. What makes this SCP particularly hard to contain as well as extremely frightening is the fact that hostile entities periodically emerge from the pond and must be neutralized before they can escape the containment area. These entities have included a floating black sphere that can fire concentrated beams of deadly radiation, a 15-foot tall reptilian humanoid that seemed immune to gunfire and a homicidal metallic humanoid nicknamed the Terminator by Foundation personnel. The most highly classified primary object class of all is Thaumiel, which consists of SCPs used to contain other SCPs. This can range from SCP-7000-J, a book of Latin incantations bound in dinosaur skin that can summon various other entities, all the way to SCP-4006, which is the entire state of Massachusetts. Thaumiel class SCPs are the most bizarre and esoteric of the anomalies dealt with by the Foundation, but thankfully, they often pose less of an active threat than many of the Euclid or Keter class SCPs. SCPs. Finally, as mentioned earlier, sometimes the SCP Foundation deems an anomaly too dangerous to contain and just needs to destroy it entirely. A terrifying example of a neutralized SCP and a perfect illustration for just how strange and abstract the anomalies dealt with by the Foundation can be is SCP-4991. This SCP manifested as a series of bizarre posts across a number of websites about an apocalyptic event that seemed to be occurring on a different layer of reality and seemed to indicate that a kind of deadly parasitic and carnivorous insect was spreading like wildfire across the globe, causing death and destruction in their wake. The SCP Foundation neutralized SCP-4991 by tracking down, containing, and erasing all infected posts across the internet before it could spread too far. Who knows what would have happened if the Foundation hadn't intervened? As is often the case with SCPs, it's probably best just not to think about. The actual structure of the SCP Foundation is surprisingly transparent, with personnel classification levels ranging from Class A to Class E. Class A personnel are considered vital to the strategic operations of the Foundation and therefore are not allowed to be in direct contact in any way with any of the SCPs due to potential risks. Class B personnel are vital to local Foundation operations on SCP test sites 
and are only permitted to be in contact with SCPs deemed to be relatively safe. Class C personnel are field agents that have far more direct contact with the SCPs and often put themselves at great risk in doing so. Class D personnel, as previously mentioned, are essentially cannon fodder thrown into the jaws of death to discover more about the more dangerous anomalies on the SCP roster. And finally, Class E personnel are personnel that have been already exposed to the potentially dangerous effects of an unknown anomaly. Class E personnel are placed into quarantine until they're deemed fit to return to work or terminated, depending on the results of their observations. In terms of actual roles in the SCP Foundation, the top of the pyramid are the O5 Council members, Class A personnel who have total clearance and oversee all Foundation operations. Below them are Site Directors, who manage the various physical Foundation facilities across the globe and report back to the O5 Council. On site, researchers and containment specialists work together to better understand and combat the anomalies being housed at their particular facility. They are kept safe by the hard work of veteran security and tactical response officers ready to lay down their lives to prevent more dangerous SCPs from ever escaping and reaching developed areas. In the event that an SCP does breach containment and escape or a new one is discovered, field operatives are dispatched by the Foundation to get the situation under control. These will consist of field agents who already operate across the globe and specialized mobile task force operatives. The SCP Foundation has eyes and ears everywhere. Their organization is influential and is embedded in every facet of society, ready to strike and suppress an emerging anomaly before any ripples of its existence can reach the wider world. Even here, we've only really scratched the surface of the SCP Foundation's extensive and frankly mind-boggling global and historical operations. There's plenty of information about the Foundation online, many of which people assume is pure fiction, but wouldn't that be the perfect cover for a real secret organization wanting to cover its tracks? As the quote says, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he doesn't exist. Ultimately, the SCP Foundation is on the side of mankind, but that doesn't mean it'll always act in our best interests. After all, if it means preserving the peace and getting another anomaly under wraps, the Foundation won't hesitate to terminate you and everyone you know without a second thought. Whether you'd want to face off against the Foundation itself or one of the anomalies they wish to contain is ultimately up to you, but trust us, neither would end well for you. Oh, speaking of which, there's another SCP we forgot to mention that's quite literally unspeakable. SCP-2521 is a creature that's made entirely of strange black tendrils that envelop and smother the creature's prey. No written records of the creature exist outside of pictograms because it immediately attacks and consumes any information produced about it. This includes speech, as the creature will appear and consume anyone who- Oh god. Oh no. It's- it's here. It's here! Help me! Ah! Pay no mind to what you just witnessed. I, the infographics show narrator, am perfectly fine. We now recommend you watch Russian Sleep Experiment Explained and how a meme, Slenderman, became real. Pay no more thought to what you've just seen or heard. Thank you.